All right, these are our limiting reactant percent yield problems out of the unit packet. So our first problem reads, sodium is a soft silvery metal that explodes violently on contact with water and burns skin by reacting with even the slightest moisture. Chlorine is a choking yellow gas used with mixed success in the trenches of World War I. When sodium and chlorine meet, they react in a fierce ball of spitting fire and clouds of white smoke, creating table salt. If you mix 59.0 grams of solid sodium with 59.2 grams of chlorine gas, which of these two will, complete, will be completely used up? So remember, this is called the limiting reactant. So the first thing we need is a balanced reaction for the formation of table salt. So we have Na plus Cl, it's a Brinkelhoff, so we need a two. Makes NaCl, remember don't carry the two over, you're gonna check charges and crisscross. So now I'll need a two here and a two here. Now to calculate the limiting reactant, we're going to start with 59.0 grams of sodium and 59.2 grams of chlorine and see which one makes the least amount of product. So I'm going to set up the dimensional analysis to do this. And if you want to go ahead and do the same, I will meet up with you as soon as we are done. All right, so I have all the dimensional analysis set up to solve for grams of sodium chloride, starting with the sodium, and grams of sodium chloride starting with the chlorine. Um, one thing to remember is that chlorine is diatomic, so double check your molar mass of chlorine. Make sure you've multiplied that by two. All right, so let's go ahead and do the math to solve for grams of sodium chloride. So we're starting with 59 grams of sodium divided by the molar mass times two divided by two, so that cancels out, times 58.45. And with three significant figures, we get 150 grams of sodium chloride from that. And then let's try this with the chlorine. So 59.2 divided by 70.9 times two times 58.45. And with three significant figures, we get 97.6 grams of sodium chloride. So that tells me that chlorine is the limiting reactant. So the limiting reactant is chlorine gas. Okay. So how much sodium chloride product should theoretically be produced? That would be 97.6 grams. We can't actually make 150 grams of sodium chloride because we're going to run out of chlorine and only make 97.6 grams of sodium chloride. That means sodium is our excess reactant and if we calculate the amount of excess reactant that's left over um, we're going to go from grams of our limiting reactant to grams of our excess so we're going to start with the 59.2 grams of chlorine and go all the way to grams of the um, excess reactant so one mole 70.9 grams now our mole ratio is going to be um, one, two moles of sodium to every one mole of chlorine and one mole of sodium is 23 grams. So let's see how many grams of sodium is actually used up in this reaction. So 59.2 divided by 70.9 times 2 times 23. Okay, so this tells me that 38 four grams of sodium is used. So that's not actually our answer. We have one more step after this. So remember, this is what's used, but the amount that we actually put into the reaction was 59. So we need to take 59.0 minus 38.4 grams. Okay. So 59 minus 38.4 gets us to a correct answer of 20.6 grams that's left over. So this is what's used and this is the amount that's left over. Okay. So if we did this lab and you actually got 95 and a half grams of sodium chloride, what would be your percent yield? So this is your actual yield. So 95.5 is your actual yield divided by the theoretical yield, which is the amount that can be produced based on your limiting reactant. So that's theoretical. You multiply that by 100 to get a percent, okay? So we need to take 95.5 divided by 97.6 times 100 to get that percent ratio of 97.8% yield, okay? 
Let's try the next one. Ammonia is pretty nasty stuff. Nevertheless, it's also an extremely important bulk chemical widely used in fertilizers, plastics, and explosives. 92.7 grams of nitrogen are combined with 265.8 grams of hydrogen to produce ammonia, which is the limiting reactant in the synthesis reaction. So we've done this reaction multiple times. You have N2 plus H2 makes ammonia and H3. So we need a two here and a three here. So we first have to figure out what the limit, which one is the limiting reactant. So I'm gonna set up the dimensional analysis starting with 92.7 grams of nitrogen and 265.8 grams of hydrogen. So I'm gonna give you a moment to set up your stoichiometry and I'm gonna get mine all set up. All right, so I have all my dimensional analysis set up, so hopefully mine looks something like yours. And we're going to go ahead and calculate to figure out which is the limiting reactant between nitrogen and hydrogen. So here we go. We have 92.7 divided by 28.02 times 2 times 17.03, which is the molar mass of ammonia. And with three sig figs, we get 113 grams of ammonia. And then we'll do the same thing with hydrogen, so 26.5, oh, 265.8 divided by 2.02. We're going to multiply that by 2 times 2 divided by 3 times 17.03. And with four sig figs, we get 1,494 grams of ammonia. So we're gonna run out of nitrogen well before we run out of hydrogen, which means that nitrogen is the limiting reactant. Okay. Theoretically, how many grams of product of ammonia should be produced? And that is the amount based on the limiting reactant. So this would be your theoretical yield in that problem. Okay, let's try the next problem. Um, so if a chemist working for Mr. Clean was doing this reaction actually produced 112 grams of ammonia, what is her percent yield? All right, so we actually need the number from here. Um, the theoretical yield is 113 grams, but they actually produced 112, so that's pretty good. Uh, divided by 113 times 100. So you have the actual yield that's done in the lab and the theoretical yield that you calculate to um, predict. So 112 divided by 113 gives you 99 times 109.1% yield. So that's really good. All right, so we have a student who reacts a half a gram of lead to nitrate with 0 0.750 grams of potassium iodide. So we need a balanced equation first. So let's walk through this since it may have been a while since we've done these. All right, so we have lead to nitrate, PbNO3-2, um, that is aqueous, and reacts that with potassium iodide, which is also aqueous. And this is actually a reaction I've done for you in the classroom. Remember, we put two clear solutions together and it made a yellow precipitate. All right, so this is a double replacement reaction. We're going to get potassium nitrate that's in solution, and then we're also going to get lead to iodide, which is that yellow precipitate, and that is a solid. Okay, so we need to balance this. So I see two nitrates here, so I'm going to start by putting a two here, and then I need to balance the iodines and potassiums by putting a two here. So now we need to figure out our limiting reactant. Um, to show the work for that, we're going to start with the half gram of lead nitrate and 0 0.750 grams of potassium iodide. So we're going to do the stoichiometry to solve for this. Um, I'll give you a moment to do that while I set mine up. I okay, have my stoichiometry set up, and one thing I looked for, because you have to pick which product to solve for, I went ahead and solved for the lead iodide because I saw down here that I have to know what the theoretical yield of lead iodide is anyway. So to make my life a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and solve for the amount of lead iodide to test um, for the limiting reactant. Okay, so I have my dimensional analysis all set up. I'm going to start with my half gram of lead nitrate divided by its molar mass and then one to one ratio times 461 grams for the molar mass of PBI2, and we get 0.696, so I can squeeze that in here, 
0.696 grams of lead iodine that's made from that um, reaction. And then I am going to try the next one. So 0 0.75 divided by 166 divided by 2 times 461. And we get 1.04 grams of lead iodide. So that tells me um, that lead nitrate is the limiting reactant because we produce less um, lead iodide. We're going to run out of the lead nitrate and stop making lead iodide once the lead nitrate is gone. So the theoretical yield is 0.696. And I don't have to do any more work because I looked ahead and saw that I needed to solve for it anyway. So if the student obtained 0.583 grams of lead iodide product after collecting it by filtration and drying it, what was the percent yield obtained? So the theoretical yield is 0.696, and this is what they actually get in lab. So I'm going to take 0.583 grams divided by the theoretical yield, 0.696, times 100. 0.583 divided by 0.696 times 100 to make it a percent ratio, we get 83.8%, which is the right answer. And that is percent yield, okay? Okay. Um, so down here, give one experimental error that could occur if percent yield is above or below 100%. Um, so most reactions don't get 100% yield. If it's below, typically what's happened is um, that there has been some loss of product in the process of transfer and filtration. Um, if the percent yield is above 100%, um, then it could be that the product isn't completely dry or maybe there were some contaminants in the, um, re in the reactants and was producing side reactions that produced a greater yield than, ex than was expected. Okay, that's it for these. Um, good luck working on these. Please let me know if you have any questions and then you'll do the practice on Chem 101.